We talked about, and you guys had watched an Ed Puzzle about exponent rules. We talked about how the bigger numbers, the base, tiny numbers, the exponent, it's telling us what to multiply. So the base times itself three times. Are you okay back there? And so then we had our exponential expression. We expanded it out. And then we were able to find the values of 2 to the 5th, 3 to the 4th, 4 to the 6th, right? This is all what we did on Thursday last week. And then today, we're going to actually talk about, well, what is that product rule? Um, that is actually the title of our lesson. So let's go ahead and write out the definition. Product rule. This is, we're just adding it on to our notes from last Thursday. Right, so we started this up here. We're pretending like we were able to finish them, even though we didn't have time and then I was absent. So, well, that happens when you have small children. Yeah, that was like our science teacher last year. Who? Her son would always get hurt. Oh, we still got it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like that'd be, Bailey's so much better for it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's not what I'm saying. Huh? She was in WE because our son no. had to go off like next year. She was in a prank? What? Oh my God. So go ahead and write this rule down, and then we'll practice it. When multiplying two exponential expressions with the same base, you add the exponents. This word? Exponential. So E X P O N E N T I A L. Exponential. Mm, sorry about that. So we have our example here. Notice that our two exponential expressions both have the same base of 4. These rules only work when your exponential expressions have the same base. If this was a 6 instead of a 4 to the 5th power, you can't do anything with it. These only work when you have that same base. The base, remember, is telling us how many times we're going to multiply something times itself. Okay? I'm sorry, the base is what we multiply based on the exponent telling us how many times we multiply it times itself. So our shortcut is 3 plus 5, which will equal 4 to the 8th power. And the way we get that is because if I were to write this in expanded form, it would be like 4 times 4 times 4, which is the 4 to the 3rd power. And then times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So again, if I were to write this all out in expanded form, how many 4s do I have? I have 8. So the shortcut, because nobody wants to write this out each time. <laughs> You okay back there, Xavier? Yeah, we're doing fours. Yeah. Into like eight plus a mm -hmm. So 
I, my shortcut is just add these. Now, last class period, students asked, do I have to show this step? You don't. You can just say 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 5th is 4 to the 8th. The only reason I'm putting this here is in case you forget what did we do when you're going back and using this as a reference. You can see I added the 3 plus the 5. Okay. So now I'm going to go on to another piece of paper because I need more room for my other examples. Again, I have, expo I have exponential expressions that have the same base. Notice that I've not done anything with the bases. They just stay that number throughout the whole thing. I do no operations with them. I don't add them. I don't subtract them. I'm only focusing my attention on the exponent. So the math for this is going to be 2 to the 10 plus negative 3. Right, I'm still adding, but now I have a negative as my exponent value. So what would my answer be? What is 10 plus negative 3? CJ? 3 to the power of 10? Or 7? 7, yep. 2 to the 7th power would be my answer, right? So we want to pay close attention to the negatives. All that work you did last year, learning all those rules with negative and positive integers, you need to know them. It's not a waste of time. That's not, no, that would have, no. That's not how, like, that would have, blank would have been filled in. I promise you guys, like, integer, negatives, positives, you're going to be, like, applying those rules from now until you're done with your education. It doesn't go away in math. It's not like one day your teacher says, guess what? We don't have to do anything with negative numbers. They're here to stay. Okay, let's do another example. 6 times 6 to the 7th power. This one's tricky because there's something hiding in this problem that we can't see, but we know it's there because I'm telling you what's hiding, Silas? Yes, there's a one right here that's hiding. Now, obviously, when I'm writing it in here, it doesn't look like it's hiding, but you all know that it wasn't there to begin with. If there's not an exponent there, the one is hiding. So this would be like 6 to the 1 plus 7, so my answer would be 6 to the 8th power because of that secret one. It's hiding. Okay, so what would this be here? Seven to the third times seven to the ninth times seven. Wow. What would that answer be, Jackson? Good job, Xavier. But you still gave him the answer, so thank you. Mm -hmm. 3 plus 9 plus that secret 1 that came from here equals 7 to the 13th power. So that's the product rule. When you said 9 plus 3, 11? It's 12. Oh. Yep. So that's the product rule. You're going to take this paper and the one we just finished, and you're going to put it in your um, jam behind semester 1. And then you're going to, at the end of semester one, and then you're going to get another piece of paper because we're going to talk about the quotient rule today.